is your RV going to look like this in about 20 years? Due to the fine construction techniques used, let's take a look at an alternative, renovating an ambulance. And welcome back to converting the ambulance as we wait for better flying weather. In this tip, I want to show of a great way to make an attachment to a piece of aluminum. Let's say that you wanted to attach something at this location. Now we could use a rivet, uh, we could use a sheet metal screw, that would be least desirable. What about using a sh normal machine screw and tapping this? And you're like, well, that's a lot of work, that would be nice, but look at this wonderful tool here. This is a combination drill, tap, and chamfer all in one. And the idea is, is that we can drill the hole and tap it very quickly. Now I'm going for a number 10 machine screw. I've drilled a pilot hole, though that's not required, but that just makes it easier to identify where we want our holes. And I'm going to make sure I don't use too much speed. And we are done. We just tapped that hole. And we can use a little Loctite if we want a permanent connection that won't come out. But the point is, is that with these wonderful bits, and you can get them in all the different flavors and sizes. This was a number 10. They have them for number 8, 10, 12, quarter. And in the standard 32 or 24 uh, threads per inch. And then again, if you wanted to chamfer, you would keep going all the way down to the end like that. But I have found this very useful where I want a quick and secure professional attachment. As long as you have enough stock behind here, this is eighth inch, probably wouldn't want to go too much thinner than that unless you uh, had a very small screw. We've made a bunch of upgrades so far, have done a lot of cutting of the metal structure and skin. So right off the bat, we're going to show you some of the power tools we use for cutting when we're creating new windows or openings for plumbing fixtures, etc. These power tools can be used to cut aluminum, whether you're building an airplane or converting an RV. Let's take a look. Now, I have used all of these tools so far. Each of them has their own unique capabilities and limitations. I'll go over them quickly because next time you have a project you might recall using one of these. So right off the bat we're all familiar with the jigsaw, saber saw. Um, obviously you want to use a very fine tooth blade for metal cutting. This is probably the most versatile because with a narrow blade it allows you to cut shapes and get into corners and whatnot. It does have its limitation though the depth of the cut is is not that far. Obviously for sheet metal it is more than adequate but there are other occasions where this just doesn't work which brings us up to our next tool and this is our miniature circular saw and it resembles the larger circular saw in many ways. Let's get the cord out of here. Now, where do I use this? When the depth of the cut is very important. Uh, for example, I had to cut the structure, and this is our quarter inch tube. This will cut all the way through one of these tubes with a single pass, and that's real nice if you're cutting out a section of wall that has this behind it. So this is really a very versatile tool. Again, using the proper blade is uh, very important. You want lots of teeth 
and it always helps if it says right on the blade that it's made for sheet metal. Uh, this, this actually works very, very nice. In fact, I do a bunch of plunge cuts where you're starting the cut right from the surface. You have to be very careful and have a steady hand and lots of good eye protection because it will kick back if you're not careful. But this certainly is quick and makes for very nice straight cuts um, as opposed to some of the other cuts. Now, this is often very nice with a, this is your basic grinding tool with a metal cutoff blade, which this is not. But this allows you to get in and cut some very hard to reach areas, especially a bolt or some other bracket that's in the way. And uh, with a, again, with a metal cutting uh, disc. The old Sawzall, again with an appropriate blade, lots of teeth. I may, I've used this to cut through both steel and aluminum skins. We'll see that this was very useful when I cut an opening between the cab and the module on the back so a person could walk through from driving to the back end. So this was very nice. Do not forget the old multi-vibrating tool with an appropriate blade. I have used this to cut off lots of bolts and screws and nails that are in the way because this, with the appropriate blade, this is not it. Um, you can get carbide blades which will cut right through, uh, like I say, even uh, bolts, stainless steel bolts, etc. This was also used quite a bit for uh, getting um, caulk that had hardened off of surfaces. Yeah, things like that. So very versatile tool. There's lots of very uh, exotic blades at your builder supply store which will cut through just about anything. Pretty amazing. And then don't forget another version of a cutoff tool, the Dremel type with the small disc. And again, this is good for getting into cutting very small pieces off similar to our, our multi-tool. Uh, also for making uh, very, uh, for uh, non-straight cuts into metal with a steady hand, you can make curves and, and other angles uh, with that. So between all of these tools, I so far have not hit a challenge that I wasn't able to tackle when it comes to cutting metal with these tools. Now let's go take a look at some of the destruction or rather construction I've made progress on the ambulance as far as uh, cutting openings. Looking on the driver's side, and, and we'll have to show before pictures also because this is clearly afterwards, we'll notice that I have installed two windows that did not exist prior. In the rear, this used to be the exhaust for the air conditioner. It was a lattice grill and behind that was the big uh, air conditioning compressor that was removed. I cut a hole and installed a sliding screened window and that worked out very nicely. And then moving forward, what used to be a small opening for a floodlight, an old style halogen floodlight, I enlarged that hole by cutting through quite a bit of structure and ended up with a non-opening window. Now here I used a polycarbonate, a smoked polycarbonate, and made up an aluminum frame. And this has become now a nice window. This is an example where I had to cut a bunch of structure and skin simultaneously through the side using those tools I showed before. So those were some major metal cutouts. And along the top, what used to be our flashing strobe lights, I have replaced those with, again, a polycarbonate smoked. So those actually provide some light inside as they pass through, but yet still retain the shape an illusion of where the light used to be.
And down below, we're getting ready to fit our gray water holding tank. We'll have more on that as we get closer to uh, plumbing that. Now let's go inside. Here are the other strobe lights that I replaced with the smoked gray polycarbonate plastic. You can kind of see the effect of that smoked polycarbonate where I replaced the flashing strobe lights on the upper end. And there's the window on the other side where the air conditioner used to sit. And then the big window that I cut out on the side there. Now we're inside looking from the rear forward and this is kind of the bulkhead and as you'll notice we increase the size what used to be just a little window is now large enough for a person to pass through so we had to cut the uh, front cab and then the back module here so it matches and then we lined it with aluminum angle sealed it up so that it won't leak because there is a gap between the cab and the module. We can look at that from the side and see that. The gap between the cab and the module and that's where we created the pass-through because there's about four inches in between the cab and the module. And from the inside, kind of hard to see but that's just big enough to climb through into the back. Here's the actual piece of the cab up front that was cut out to make for the larger pass-through. So wasn't that a lot of fun. Gotta, gotta thank my friend Bob for his steady hand in cutting that out and of course the other help we got along the way. And then above what used to be another strobe light, like the one on the left and the right, I increased the size of that much larger and put in a sliding window so that a person will be able to look out above the cab and also get a cross breeze. And on the left and the right, those will be filled in with the smoke gray polycarbonate. And here's a view from the outside of that new window. Now we have to start thinking about plumbing and facilities. So to the right of our opening, right in this area is where I want to put the bathroom, the toilet in particular. Notice I have drilled a hole into this built-in cabinet and I created some wood structures here and that is to hold our holding tank. Now this is going to be our black water holding tank. It's got an outlet and basically it's going to fit this out of the way. I haven't permanently mounted much yet, but the outlet will go into that hole. Like that. And then, we'll mount the base something like this. Cut a hole, and then the, the potty will sit on top go into the black tank and then into there and of course we'll build a wall around all of this but basically got to get the infrastructure in place first and make sure all the plumbing connections work out nicely this is a uh, 18 gallon tank good for s several dozen flushings I wanted to use a conventional RV toilet with water 
I know a lot of other conversions use all sorts of schemes like sawdust and recycling and plastic bags and no water this and a lot of weird stuff uh, with weird equipment. This is a normal water dump tank which will have a normal dump so when you go to a station you let everything out. Um, and so that, that was just my preference and it was very easy to do with these tanks you can purchase and you can make your own holes and vents as necessary and take up as little or as much room as you want to build a facilities like this. So we're getting there. And from the suspension upgrade repair side we have an example of one of the two airbags that got replaced. The old ones were leaking. The new ones seem to work just fine. We use uh, compressed air of course and uh, this unit has no springs whatsoever. Those two airbags completely provide the ride for the entire rear unit. Here's a quick pictorial of the items that have been removed thus far. There's our air conditioning unit, of course, and then all of the cabinets, and we will reuse some of them, not all of them. Lots of 12 volt fluorescent light fixtures, and a box full and box fulls of these Wayland strobe lights with some interesting bulbs inside. Our first couple miles of wire that was removed and all of the relay control panels and miscellaneous that weren't used. And here's the other few miles of wire that was taken out. We will reuse wherever we can. And compressors galore. Big compressors, small compressors for the air horn, for the uh, airbag system. And there's an air tank there. We'll reuse some of that. And then I think we showed this from a previous view. And from a previous view, keeping track of that's all of the strobe electronics, 12 volt converters, PA systems, electrical switch boxes, all sorts of odds and ends. So if you need something, uh, make me an offer, of course. Some of it's got to go onto eBay or to the trash or something. So that's a quick synopsis of what we've done so far. I think I'm done with cutting openings and holes into the uh, side and going to spend most of our time now on the plumbing and electrical. Uh, a lot of the plumbing parts and pieces is all uh, prototyping, trial by error, see what fits, see what works out because we have limited space and we're trying to design it so that we have a nice good size water tank to supply us with water for shower, toilet, sink and then the appropriate sewage or holding tanks uh, to collect all that. Just like a regular RV except you kind of have to figure it out as you go because there are no plans uh, per se and uh, it is quite uh, challenging in some ways but boy you sure learn a lot and then the electrical will come after that and uh, uh, for me that's a little bit on the easier side we'll leave that uh, to the end so until next time